here with Kevin Sorbo talking about this new movie, God's Not Dead. Why does this movie need to be made? Uh, you know, it's sort of timely with everything that's going out. There's so much bashing of Christians, and I'm, I'm, t- I'm, s- I'm still trying to understand why. I don't, I don't quite get it. I, uh, are, the, uh, are the Christians the ones causing most of the violence in the world? Are they, are they strapping bombs on themselves and blowing up buses that I'm unaware of? Because I can't quite figure it out. But uh, it's interesting with the number of faith-based movies that are coming out. And to me, I think it all started with, with, with Blindside. I mean, actually, Passion before that did, did, sure. did very, very well. But Blindside really said, the studio said, wait a minute, there's a huge audience out there that's being underserved. So I, I also think what's important is the quality of them coming out are much better. Mm-hmm. That, that, usually, if you're doing a faith-based movie, people look at them as cheesy movies, bad scripts, bad acting, bad lighting, bad everything, look like a bad soap opera. But now they're coming out with very good stories, and great cinematographers shooting, and it makes a big difference. But I th- there's a huge audience that is tired of it. Enough is enough, and they want stuff that their family can watch. Because most of television, there's a lot of you know, nighttime TV isn't what the way it used to be, and parents are going, I don't want my eight-year-old watching this. You play the, the prof in this movie. Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll be hated by a few in the oh, beginning because you 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 play a very good typical role of someone who's going to be the antagonist in this situation. Um, what do you say to the college kid who's stepping on campus as a believer and is going to have that kind of a prof? You know, I'm, I'm hoping that parents out there with their kids when they're going on, even through junior and high school and, and, that, and college as well, that they open the, uh, open the door for a good dialogue between them and their kids. They say, look, if there's a problem, if there's things that you're uncomfortable with, please at least let us know. Because t- professors like this need to be exposed. Teach. Your job was to teach. Your job was not there to sit there and tell people the way they should think in terms of religion and politics. That's not your job. If the kid's there to learn about whatever subject is, then teach your subject. But, you know, there's going to be knee-jerk reactions by people saying, well, that would never happen. Thank God, at the end of this movie, they show about 50 credits of court cases that back up this. And that's another thing a lot of people from that side of the world don't want. They hate facts. They hate the truth. And this is going to totally bug them because it's factual, but they live in their own little, you know, imagine John Lennon world, which doesn't exist. Hey, I was thinking as you were producing this movie, you're an actor, so this is what you do. But I was curious to know what happened while the movie was being made in your life as you played this character. How did God reveal himself to you that he's not dead? Well, you know, I've, I've been a Christian my whole life, so it wasn't something I had to, I had to worry about and question myself. I, I don't consider myself a reborn Christian, but there was certainly time during the teenage years where I was getting mature enough to sort of really understand and question more about things. Um, but I went to, I saw Billy Graham speak in and, and St. Paul, and I was blown away. I was 14 years old. So if there's a reborn moment in my life, I think that was certainly it. I made a lot of mistakes. I'm not a perfect human being, trust me. I, I, there are things that I would I regret and go, why did I do this? Why did I do that? But, you know, I, I, I know that uh, through prayer for myself, I know God has forgiven me. I think the toughest critic is myself. I've had a hard time forgiving myself on some things I've done. But, um, you know, it's this movie's going to, what's great about God's Not Dead, it shows both sides and shows this collision of them coming together. And it's, it's really, it's, I don't want to preach to the choir. I want the choir to come. I want them to see it. I want to spread the word. And hopefully they will because parents want more movies like this made. And if they want more movies that their, that their kids can see, then support the movie. You know, when you buy that ticket to the movie theater, you're supporting that movie and showing Hollywood, we want more movies like this, because it's called show business. Yeah. Trust me, they will make more movies like this if they make money. Exactly. Uh, but I want, the, I want those, those, those fence sitters, those, those ag- agnostics that haven't, you know, they kind of think, kind of don't know. Atheists are going to do what they're going to do. I mean, I've had my debates with them. I've, I mean, I've met the really angry ones. I've met friends. I've got friends who are atheists that are the one, wonderful people and will do anything for people. It's just they don't believe. So we've had the talks, we've had the debates, but, you know, it's, I can't make somebody change their mind, but I can certainly give them my opinion. And I don't mind them giving, you know, their opinion to me. I don't get angry about that. Last question. Okay. Simple, but I'd like you to kind of tease it out for me. Right. Is God dead? God is not dead. There's no question. God is not dead, and uh, I, see, I see it every day in life. When I when I see a, you know hear about a baby being born or the tree coming to life during the springtime and and snow falling and the moon sitting up there shining around and seeing millions of stars, guys, something started all this. So you just have to have faith. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I'm looking forward to seeing the film. Sure.